Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to be looking at a multi-part question here on the labor-leisure um, model of labor-leisure choice. And we're going to be uh, graphing a budget line, figuring out the reservation wage, calculating margin range substitution, and then ultimately uh, finding an optimal rate of consumption and leisure. So we start here with a, a functional form for the utility function. Um, we have 110 hours available per week to split between labor and leisure, $10 per hour after tax wage, and $320 worth of non-labor income. Okay, so we're going to start by graphing Shelley's budget line. To do that, we'll start down here. So the main formula that we're going to need to be able to do this is that consumption formula where we have consumption is your wage rate times hours worked plus any non-labor income. The other way to write that is wage rate times total hours available minus hours spent on leisure. That's going to be equal to your hours worked. And then again, plus your non-labor income. Okay, so we're going to use a pretty simple budget line here. Um, if Shelly does not work, that means she's spending all 110 of her hours available um, with leisure, right? 110 hours available in the week total. So, you know, T is 110. <clears throat> um, the wage rate was uh, $10 per hour. So we can go ahead and actually let's let's do this down here. Wage times hours worked plus V. That's $10 an hour times, of course, zero hours worked plus non-labor income plus non-labor income of 320 for a total consumption of 320. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and start drawing this down here. We have consumption on the vertical axis, leisure hours on the horizontal, 110 available. That's going to come up to some point here, the endowment point V of 320. So we have our first point there. And if she doesn't have any leisure but spends all of her time working, zero hours of leisure, consumption is a $10 wage times 110 hours plus her non labor income. And that'll work out to 1000 $420. Okay, so that can be up here somewhere, 1420, and we connect that with a straight line. A straight line. And that will be uh, with the slope of negative 10 or that wage rate of 10. So the slope is negative, um, but it's equal to the wage there. Okay, so that uh, that actually answers the first question here, the, the graphing of Shelley's budget line, including the intercepts. All right, um, then ultimately we're going to be working toward finding, finding that level of utility which will optimize some bundle of leisure and consumption. But that's what we're working toward in this entire problem. We're going to need the marginal rate of substitution to do that. Um, marginal rate of substitution is different along all the different points of, a, of an indifference curve. right? So if, if leisure here is 100, then there will be a marginal rate of substitution like that. right? If leisure here is, say, 20, there's a marginal rate of substitution like this. So every point, every point of leisure has its own marginal rate of substitution. We're going to be calculating this one. 
Okay, so what is the slope of the indifference curve when leisure is equal to 100? And she's on her budget line. Okay, so to do that, marginal rate of substitution is equal to the ratio of the marginal utilities, marginal utility of labor over marginal utility of consumption. Uh, we know these up above. Marginal utility of leisure is C minus 100, and of consumption is uh, L minus 40. Those are just the first derivative of uh, the partial derivative of the utilities, real, utility function with respect to L and with respect to uh, C. So this would be du dl, and that'll come out to C minus 100 if you double check that. Um, Okay, so C minus 100 over L minus 40. Okay, <clears throat> so we have two variables here. We need to get this into one. So what we can do is take our consumption formula, which we know is WH plus V, or to get it in terms of L, so that we'll be able to have a common variable. Um, that's T minus L plus V. And we know what L is, we know what T is, we know what V is, so we can start at this point plugging in some numbers. The wage is $10. Total hours available is 110. Minus L at this point is 100. plus the endowment. Solve that, work that out to get 420. So consumption is 420, and we can take that and throw it into that equation up there. So 420 minus 100 over L, we know is 100, so 100 minus 40, and we're left with 320 over 60 for an end result of $5.33. So what that's telling us is uh, when Shelley is working uh, 10 hours and has 100 hours of leisure, in order to be convinced or bribed, say, to work one more hour, she would have to be paid uh, at least $5.33. Okay, that's, uh, that's the interpretation there, marginal rate of substitution. That's how, we, that's how we find it. You need to use that consumption formula and then plug it into the ratio of marginal utilities. Okay, thanks. Um, in the next video, we're going to... No, 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 we're in the same video. All right, so... Uh, um, Let's move to the next step of this video. All right, we've got the marginal rate of substitution. Um, let's calculate the reservation wage. Okay, so uh, in the previous video, I talked about this, um, but ultimately uh, recall that the reservation wage is the marginal rate of substitution when hours worked is zero. So, um, Reservation wage equals that marginal rate of substitution when H equals zero. So we have the ratio of marginal utilities again. And we just saw those. That's C minus 100 over L minus 40. All right, so when H is zero, then consumption is only that non-labor income, right? WH is going to be zero plus V. So C is equal to that $320. So $320 minus 100 over L. So when H is zero, L is the total hours minus H 
and total hours is 110. So there are 120. All of the hours spent on leisure, how much would it take to convince them to work that first hour? That is this reservation wage. So 110 minus 40, we solve and we get 3.14. Okay, so essentially, if they are not working at all, then they need to be paid at least $3.14 in order to consider working that first hour in the labor market. So there we calculate <clears throat> the reservation wage. And finally, uh, we'll calculate this optimal amount of consumption and leisure. So from labor leisure theory, um, let's maybe over here just show this graphically briefly. Consumption, leisure, some endowment, which in this case is 320. The wage rate here is uh, is 10. So the slope there is negative 10. And Shelley here is going to optimize, maximize utility subject to that budget constraint. Here's their utility curve. And they're going to find this bundle. This will be the optimal amount of consumption. This will be the optimal amount of leisure. And so this is what we're calculating here. All right, we have a functional form for the indifference curve. We have the the slope for the um, for the budget line. And so this optimal bundle occurs where the slope of that indifference curve, the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the slope of the budget line, which is just the wage. Okay, so optimal bundle. Is found. Where the marginal rate substitution is equal to the wage. Okay, so we can use that information and start plugging in what we know. So the wage is the marginal rate of substitution, which we know is the ratio of marginal utilities. And so that's C minus, sorry, C minus 100 over L minus 40. So again, we know we, know we have a formula for consumption. We can, we can plug that in here, um, consumption. It's WH plus V. It's not so useful to have H, but it would be useful to have an L. So let's rewrite this as wage times total hours available minus leisure. That'll be your H plus V. Okay, um, we have some of this information. We have the wage. We know that's 10. Total hours available is 110 minus L plus 320 okay and uh, we'll keep the L as is we're gonna we're gonna have L as a variable uh, but we can plug this into the C up above so we have wage rate is equal to C minus 100 or L minus 40 that's equal to the C which is 10 times 110 minus L plus 320. Oh, uh, oh, that's C minus 100 over L minus 40. Uh, okay, and so we know also that the wage is equal to 10, so we can use that. Um, and so let's start to let's start to let's bring this up to the other side. So we have 10 times L minus 40 is equal to 1,100 minus 10 L plus 320 minus 100. Okay, this is.
10L minus 40. All right, and we can consolidate a bit there. 1320 minus 10L. Consolidate the L's. 20L is equal to, uh, that's, uh, that's not, that's not, yeah. I guess that's, ah, sorry about that. Let's see. Okay, we get, we do a little bit of algebra. We should get here plus 320 um, minus 100. Oh, yeah, no, that was that was okay. That was okay. All right, back up a sec. 10L minus 400 equals the 1300, 1320 minus 10L. So we get 20L is equal to 1720L is equal to 86. Okay, there we go. Um, get through a little bit of algebra there, and we'll get our optimal L. And then finally, we can plug that in to our optimal C, which is going to be W times T minus the optimal L plus V. Okay, that's going to be 10, 110 minus 86, plus 320. I'm going to spare myself from the algebra. And in the end, calculate that out, and you'll get, oops, uh, and you'll get 560. Okay, and so that is then what we'll have here. We have three twenty. Um, this is going to be five sixty. This is going to be eighty six, and that's that point where the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line. Okay, um, yeah, so there you go. There's a big problem uh, with lots of parts, um, but ultimately solving for uh, optimal consumption and optimal leisure. All right, thanks everybody.